Welcome, welcome. I forgot. My mute button was done still. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome tonight. We're going to have a fun night tonight. Y'all ready? You got your pajamas on, feet up, a little glass of bubbly there. One night I'm going to do this in my pajamas. <laughs> I'm close, trust me. But anyway, we're going to talk about the trench coat tonight. I promise you, I promise you, you, you know, even if you're not interested in the trench coat, you have to listen because there's so many cool things we're going to do besides the trench coat. Or we're going to do actually with the trench coat. Is that a deal? So it is October 12th. Today is Columbus Day in 1492, right? Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And boy, he landed on that Plymouth Rock. Yes, a new colony was formed. And we are all glad he did, or we're, I guess we're hopefully glad he did, but today is a celebration. And if you're in Canada, happy Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving Day in Canada today, so if you're listening there, happy Thanksgiving to you all. And hopefully you had a wonderful day. And probably if you had Thanksgiving, you're probably not watching this, but in the taping of it, the next day or so maybe you will. But anyway, we're going to do trench coat. We always start off with our questions and our answers, so we're going to just do that questions and answers. It always takes a little while for everybody to kind of get up to speed. It's 97 degrees. Where? How do I get so excited about a trench coat when it's hot outside? Here's how. This is my philosophy. See, I know it's not going to stay hot. And it's so exciting to be making clothes that you're going to need down the road, that's really cool. Because you have time. You're not pressured like, oh, I got to wear this Friday night or whatever. You have time so you can make and really come up with good ideas. Oh, it's so exciting to work in advance. And then you can put the trench coat to the side, take a break and go outside and jump in the pool because it's 97 <laughs> degrees outside. It's awesome. It's perfect to me, especially when you know it's going to get cold. We all know it's going to get cold. How many winters have we had that it hasn't been cold? So we know it's going to be cold. So it's perfect. It's perfect to me. That's just how I look at it. But my children will tell you that I'm a ridiculous optimist and I need to get rid of that quality and I'm working on it trust me <laughs> they're trying to get me into the realist category and we're, we're working on it all right how do I make accurate armhole templates when my front and back armholes have been adjusted and are different well you make your templates before you make the adjustments you don't make your templates after the adjustments your templates are supposed to be a sleeve or excuse me an armhole and a sleeve that works together then you make whatever adjustments you need to and then you put the template back on and you restore it back to the armhole that you liked so it shouldn't does that make sense I think you lost it somewhere in there that um, the, the templates are, are supposed to restore your armhole back to what it was before you made all your adjustments okay does that make sense everybody I think sounds like it makes sense to me so let me know if it doesn't <laughs> all right so just for a minute while y'all are gathering and collecting I want to talk about PBS for a little bit if I can do that I think it's really important you know we've been doing PBS now for several years and all along, I've really felt like, oh, you know, it's a different entity. I don't want to really talk about it. But we kind of need to talk about it. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I think it's important. I've realized it's important from talking to programmers around the country, just from learning, from learning the context of PBS and what it is and what it offers. And when I say PBS, you know, I think technically I'm not allowed to use that word. I have to say public television series, but I'm going to say public television series. Um, how it operates is all shows are donated to PBS. I'll say to PBS or to NETA. NETA is kind of a filtering system for PBS. So NETA. All shows are they're not only donated, they're actually paid to be given to NETA and NETA distributes them 
to whatever PBS station that wants to take them. Every PBS station in this country operates individually. That's not like if on you know Monday night you watch Dancing at the Stars on ABC, the whole country watches Saturday, you know, Monday night Dancing with the Stars at seven o'clock. PBS stations don't work like that. Everybody programs themselves, everybody does what they want, and so we're on at a zillion different times and a zillion different stations, et cetera, et cetera. But here's what's important for, I think, to understand. I have gotten a tremendous amount of emails that say, we love your show, we love your show. No one said yet that they hate the show, but it's okay if you do. But everyone said, we love the show, we love the show, we love the show, we love da 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 And the emails are terrific. Silhouette Patterns owns the rights to this television series. You know, PBS, we own those rights. We pay for all the production cost. We pay to give the show to PBS. So everything has a fee attached and we pay all of that. Um, PBS then decides which ones they want to do and which ones they don't want to do. But here's the point of why it's important for you to understand it. We don't get paid for doing the show. <laughs> Not on any level we don't get paid. PBS has some pretty strict standards, NETA has some pretty strict standards on what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, what is allowed is for us to have like a fundraising time. What's not allowed is for us to do that after the show's been produced. It has to be prior to the show being produced. It has to be um, declared all the gifts. Everything has to be declared you know, because PBS doesn't want to be commercialized or any of those things. So it's a protection of what PBS feels like they stand for. It's to hold their standards high. And, you know, we, we comp um, compile, we, we, what's that word I want? We, um, we f comply, thank you. We comply to all of their rules and all of their standards. So I'm telling you this for two reasons. Number one, starting tomorrow, we're going to have a PBS drive. We have to do that before we film Series 500. Series 500 is being filmed in November. The title of the series is Retro revisited and updated. I think we're all, uh, by far this is the most exciting series to me for many, many reasons, but I think you're just going to be thrilled at what we're doing. We have a lot of interviews. Anyway, it's terrific. It's wonderful. Um, we're going to start that tomorrow. It's going to go for two weeks and then we have to shut it down. It's not a pre-sale because we can't pre-sale a product. Well, actually, we could pre-sale a product, but we're not going to pre-sale the product. Um, but there are some packages. And anyway, you'll get emails of that. But the main reason I bring this up is because I really, in the beginning, thought, no, we won't mention this, etc. I, I told you that. I think it's really good for you guys to not tell us how much you like the show, but for you all to tell your PBS station how much you like the show. And talking to the we're on KERA, which is Channel 13 here in Dallas, Texas. We're on Saturday mornings. And in talking to the programmer who stations that, you know, he said to me, look, I've got five sewing shows and I've got one slot or two slots to put in the sewing shows. I don't know sewing from knitting, from crocheting, from quilting. I don't know the difference between any of them. To me, you know, I my hobby is XYZ. He said, if I get one phone call, one letter, one anything, he said, that just really tips the scale to where I didn't know anything prior to that. So I'm going to ask you, if you were going to write, if you thought about it, do write your PBS stations and let them know there's a show called Fit to Stitch On and you'd like to see it if you're not airing. If it's airing in your area, just tell them you're watching. Tell them you love it. Tell them you hate it. Tell them you want it to continue. But I want you to be verbal to them and not us. While I appreciate you being verbal to us, it really doesn't help us as much as it does being verbal to the station. All right, so I've said enough. This week we're going to have our... Um, you know, guideline ruled uh, kind of fundraiser thing, what we're going to do, and you'll get an email on that tomorrow, and then make your voice heard to public television. It really will make a difference for us. Thank you. Okay, question is, how do I convert a collar for a woven blouse to a mandarin blouse like 350 or 400? That is a pattern making question. So I think that's a little bit beyond kind of what we do. We do pattern changes, and I kind of talk about all kinds of different things. But now you're talking about pattern drafting. To answer the question simply, a mandarin is just a narrowed 
convertible collar, if you know all those terms. It's just a narrow convertible collar. But whenever it comes to pattern making, I kind of don't answer those questions. We have a pattern making DVD on pattern making, but I'm not here to teach pattern making. I'm here to help you get the patterns to fit and then make changes and simple changes to where you can get a completely different look with your fabric and the few changes that are there. So hopefully that kind of qualifies the goal. I made the cool eye pattern in the inner hemline. The inner hemline is longer than the sides. Why did this happen and how do I fix it? It could have happened because your waist is a different angle than what our fit model is. We have two fit models, one's a size 8 and one's a size 18. So it just means that you're maybe not taking up as, as much room in the middle or you're taking up more on the sides. So just change the angle on the waist. So just take out some of that middle and pull it up a little bit and then or scoop it out I guess the terminology would be just kind of scoop that waist just a little bit and pull that up so it all hangs from the waist and if those waist shapes don't match then the hemline will hang crooked it is not the hem's fault we're not going to blame it on the hem but we're just going to fix it at the waist all right would you please review how to sew a French dart I will um, let's talk about French darts period you know I am learning, I was in Chicago, you guys know I've been all over the place. Um, anyway, I am learning that you all have stuff in your head and it's blocking you from getting a French dart. So I do have a French dart and I pulled it out tonight because I really want to um, r explain this so that you understand it. The problem is, is this is a difficult forum to explain it because you can't, you, you know, we have to, resolution has to be a certain amount so that we can broadcast live. Um, and so we, we're not in 1080 HD, we have to lower the resolution, and so it's a little harder to see. So I need you to listen to my words because I'll say exactly what you're doing and I'll try to show it as we go along. I kind of practiced this earlier and we taped it to kind of see what you could see and what you couldn't see. Um, okay, so a French dart, keep in mind, a French dart on all of our patterns, it's a combination of the bust dart and the waist dart together. So it's a horizontal dart, a vertical dart, and you get this angular dart. It is terrific, it's wonderful, yada, yada, yada. It's great. And everyone who has them loves them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you cut out the pattern, first off, let me just say that these are all cut lines. Y for some reason, many of you stop cutting when you get to the French dart. These are cut lines. They have seam allowances added to them. So when you're cutting out this French dart, you should continue to cut along those lines. Then you have this big hole inside the French dart because there's a seam allowance that's been added to that French dart. So when I, when I made the pattern, I cut out all seam allowances and the opening was all the way to the point. When you added seam allowance in, the point got backed up because seam allowance crossed one another until it came to the point where it was open. And so there's a 3 8 here. And so gradually, once you leave the, the last cut point, that's as a taper. That means the 3 8 has cr is crossing one another. And it tapers, 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 tapers to nothing until you get to the dot on the pattern as to where you're supposed to stitch to. That dot is only a guide. Um, if you want to stitch lower, you can. If you want to stitch higher up, you can do that also. But you should be cutting out along those lines. These are all cut lines on the tissue. If you are nervous that there's that it's too close to the dart, then you don't have to cut all the way up to those cut lines. You know, leave an inch left and then but cut the rest out. Otherwise, you're not going to know where to sew. All right. So then, along with the French dart, when I sew the French dart with those seam allowances done, my side seam becomes a straight angle line. So the question has come up oh my gosh, like every day, <laughs> repeatedly. And I've answered this a lot, so I'm going to answer it again. And we'll put it in the notes, French dart um, answers, so that as you're going to research it, you, you'll see French dart answers. Um, so when I close this dart up, the side seam becomes a straight angle line. If I want to go from one size to another, then I just re-angle it from up here to larger down here at the hip line. It's a very easy thing to do, but if I'm doing that, close the French dart up as if it would be sewn and then draw the new cut line. And you'll see, then open it up and draw out the ends of the darts. 
and just follow them regardless of where they go. They don't have to be exact. Remember that it's a seam allowance and you've got a little error factor. But just follow those lines as you open them so that you know exactly where you want to go. The other thing I do is if I'm cutting out like I did, I did something, I'll show you a little bit later, I did the sweater set and I wanted a little more room in the hips. So I took the pattern center front is straight on the fold and I tilted the bottom off the fold about a half an inch. Now that added a whole inch to the front and an inch to the back because there's four times. So again, I took the fold line, I left the neckline on the fold line, but I skewed the bottom over so I don't have to play with the French dart at all. I simply added more to the, I added um, two whole inches to the hip line by simply skewing the pattern off of the fold line by a half an inch at the bottom. So it's kind of going to look like a big dart right at the center front, but it's still straight of grain. It's still fine to add it there. You don't want to add too much there because um, it just throws off the proportions, but you can easily add a half an inch there and that will end up being two whole inches all the way around. So that's a very simple way to do it. So step one, if you're trying to make the hip line larger, close up the dart and add, redraw the side seam, or just take the pattern and tilt it away from the center fold at the hip line and that will do it also. When you go to sew that French dart, I start at the tip. I started, I think there's a, a video on YouTube on how to sew the French dart. I think we've done it several times. Look for the topic or Google that once you get to YouTube. You're going to start at the tip and you want to hold the dart in the angle so that it's actually a straight line going right to the bottom and you start at the tip and you sew right on and, and then it's going to get smaller and smaller. When you get to where it's cut, you should be 3 8 by that point because that's where the 3 8 inch seam allowance is added and then you'll go right to the bottom. Don't, um, we showed it in a workshop one time because what, what, it's Mary Lou. Sorry, I hope that didn't embarrass you, Mary Lou. Nobody knows you. But anyway, what she was doing is she was kind of starting it crooked and then she was trying to turn it as she started. Whereas you want to hold it in a straight line and as you start, it'll just come pick up straight line. It's very easy to do. And after I showed her how to do that, she sent me an email and said, wow, genius. It's just really easy. I don't think it's genius, but it is really easy. All right, so I hope that helps. All right, any more questions? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead with the questions. And that took a long time, but that was part of tonight. I was going to show that, so it just happened to come up in a question, and that's fine. I was making a short kimono sleeve, not silhouette pattern. It was too... T don't... don't... <laughs> um, it was too tight under the arms. This simply a circumference problem? Yes, stupid question, I know. I'm working on the principles. Of, it was too tight under the arm. No, too tight under the arm could be styling. That could be the, just that the armhole itself is too short. So if it was too tight under the arm, that's not necessarily a circumference issue. You know, because it's not a silhouette pattern, I, I'm not, and that's the only reason I don't answer non-silhouette patterns, not because I hate them. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me what you all use. Um, I just don't know the base. So I don't, uh, I don't know how to answer that question because I'm only listening to your description and your description could be completely wrong therefore my answer could be completely wrong so it's really hard to answer but it could be too tight yes but it also could be that the armhole itself is too short and and that could just be a styling thing so I'm not sure which one of those how do you lay the pattern on the fabric for sway back adjustment on knit tops without a back seam um, I think we need to start a FAQ on silhouette patterns I think an FAQ, we'll work on that in the month of November, okay, you guys? Um, so that we could do FAQs, and this is one of them. Whenever you have any kind of angle at the back, front, I don't care where it is, the center, the pattern itself is not straight anymore, but you can still put it on a straight of grain, and you might cut off a little bit of circumference or add a little bit of circumference, depending on what the problem is, but you can always add that in over at the side seam. You can still keep the center back or center front on a fold and then whatever you're cutting off you can add to the side seam. Remember that center front is just one place. You have other places in the pattern where circumference can be taken away or added in. So just look for other places to adjust whatever it is you're deducting out of that amount. Okay? That's a good frequently asked question though because it, it comes up quite often. And it makes sense. I mean 
you know, just as we don't know patterns well, if that makes sense, we kind of get that a lot. Um, I've heard armhole templates mentioned a few times. What are they? And is this topic covered in What's Up Your Sleeves video? Definitely covered in What's Up Your Sleeves. Definitely covered. I mean, like, definitely. <laughs> um, because armhole templates are just, they are, you know, in my observation, as I have not been a long-term sewing world, my background was ready to wear, I see a lot of armhole sleeve problems. And armholes and sleeves seem incredibly simple to me. And so I've tried to simplify them for you all. And in doing that, we made a template. And that template is what you like. It's different from person to person for a sleeveless, a t-shirt, a blouse, and a jacket. So all of those templates, except for the sleeveless, has a sleeve that goes with it. And so whenever I'm making a new pattern, I'm not familiar with that pattern, if it's a blouse, I simply use my blouse template and put it on and use the blouse sleeve that I know works so that I don't have any problems with my armholes and my sleeves that surprise me toward the end. Sleeves and armholes are a problem as I see a lot of drafting errors in patterns. And so that was really just established to help everybody kind of get away from that, from those issues. Okay? And they are in the video, What's Up Your Sleeves? You guys, if you do not have what's up your sleeve, please get it and watch it because you'll have so many of your questions answered. You know, there's so many times where I get questions and I'm answering the questions, but it takes more than an email answer. And it's, you know, it's kind of frustrating on my end to answer that because I know you might not be getting it all. And that video says much of it. And it's 20 bucks or something like that. I often have a puddle of fabric along the back neckline of 195. What is the best way to resolve this? I have prominent shoulder blades in back with a hollow in between. Can you suggest a fix? No, that doesn't make sense. Send me a photo. If you can get a friend or somebody just to, sh to shoot me a photo of that, it has to be length, circumference, or depth. The fabric won't just I mean, your shoulder blades, it doesn't matter how prominent your shoulder blades are. 195 is a knit, and the knit will stretch over those shoulder blades. Puddling means an extra fabric or an excess of fabric, as I'm hearing that. Ex excess of fabric, um, no, it, it doesn't make s no, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But sh send it, Peggy at silhouettepatterns.com, shoot me a photo, and let me visualize what it looks like, and then I can... Um, help you identify what it is and then get a resolution for it. If I only use your pattern, should I still create armhole templates? Um, yes and no. I mean, we have really created armhole templates for you. So what that means is all of our knits are one, are the same. All of our blouses are the same. All of our jackets are the same. If you like ours, no, you don't need an armhole template. But if you make 195, which is a sweater set, and then you say, well, I love everything about it, but I want the armhole to be smaller, then, you know, you want to create a template. It means, let's say if you made a size 3, and you wanted to use a size 2 sleeve and armhole, then you could take the 2 and put it on the 3. But it's just faster if you take the two and have a template and trace it on as you're cutting out the two and then you uh, there's a three and then use the size two sleeve to go with that. Does that make sense? So even if you're using our patterns, it doesn't mean you'll like our sleeves. I do, but it doesn't mean you all will. So it just depends on if you like them, you're fine. If you don't, then you need to make a template and use those. Okay? Okay. All right. So that went a little longer, but again, it, part of the lesson tonight was on French darts and we've done that and covered that, so now we'll move on. So here was my goal tonight, you guys, and I'm telling you, I think I've reached my goal. Okay, you all can tell me if that's true or not after the webcast is over. When I looked into the trench coat, the trench coat has 26 pieces. So the emails that I kept getting was, da da da, it has too many pieces, it's too hard, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know that when somebody says to me, you can't do it, I'm like bound and determined to help you all I can. Because if I can make a trench coat, so can you. I have no particular sewing skills that you don't. And the trench coat is all straight lines. There is one curved line that you're going to sew. Other than that, it's all straight. 
but we're going to work up to a trench coat. So here's the deal. The first one I made, this first version that I made, uses four pieces. All right, so that means we eliminated 22 pieces <laughs> and only stuck with four pieces. This is a hot trend for fall. You're going to love this. And it's this one right here. I don't know if you can see this right here. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this and how, how I did it and what I did. The trend right now is long vests. They're actually knee length or longer. If you are less than 5'4", don't make them longer than your knee. You're just going to look too squatty. But if you're 5'6", taller, um, you can go, you know, like 3 or 4 inches below your knee and with a little leather boot or something, a leg in, it's just a great look for fall. They're all over. This is a vest. Now, I know it's black. I know. Don't email me that you can't see what this black. I wanted to show off the fabric and I wanted it for me. So <laughs> this is what I chose. This is a reversible cotton knit. This is absolutely luscious. It feels like a sweatshirt, only better because it's an Italian cotton. It's absolutely scrumptious. So we have them in several colors. We have them in a black gray, a black and a darker gray. This is the black and the darker gray. Then we have them in a brown beige. They're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. So because they are two-sided, I don't need any of the linings. I don't need anything. So all I did on this is I added six inches to the bottom of the trench coat took the trench coat six inches to the bottom and the only other thing I used I saw a picture of Kendall Jenner wearing exactly like this I mean it was the cutest little outfit and then she just had it on with jean leggings and I don't care what age you are this is a great look for you it's about the belt find a belt nothing will show except for the great belt buckle so find a belt you like you're going to make a long top underneath. Now what I did is I used the same fabric underneath and I used underneath, I just used the sweater set 195. And I don't know if you can see up here, but I turned the inside. This would make a, an easy reversible shirt. It's really good looking inside. But I turned the, the gray to the outside. So it made a little gray trim around the neckline. And then on the trench coat, the only thing I used was the front to back. I used the collar and I used the stand. Now what I did on this is I'm going to pretend for a minute that this is the collar. I sewed the right side of the collar to the wrong side of the fabric so that when you flip it out all of this looks finished and you're surging. I just surged it all. All of your surging is inside. So I made the shirt with it. The shirt is what has sleeves. The inside of this jacket is the gray. It's great as you're walking. It flips open because you can see the inside and you can see that it's two-sided. It's, it's just really a great look. So it's knit. It's casual. It fits well. The French darts. It's a trench coat. It just simply has no sleeves. It just has the collar. What I like about the collar, you could leave the collar off. What I like about the collar personally is it widens the top of the garment and it makes the bottom of you look thinner. So I thought that was a real positive and so I went ahead and put on that collar up there and you can see I'll turn it around. Lightweight knit, vest, just a great look. Collars down here, easy to do. So see I know all of you could use four pieces and create that trench coat. Long, great look. And like I said those long vests are all over. You could if you wanted to put the sleeve onto the trench and then wear a sleeveless garment underneath. I wanted a long sleeve t-shirt and I wanted the vest that looks almost the same and I really wanted uh, the vest look because I liked it and because it's really stylish right now over the non vest. Okay, it took, um, took two yards. One and, a, one and a half was kind of for the coat itself and then I mean it might take three but for me I got it with two it depends on the size you are and then you know how long your additional inches are just lay it out on some fabric you have at home and figure out how much you need and then place your order it all depends on your size and your height your height yeah yeah it's the first it's the second one that's not this one is the second one but if you look at the first and the second one, that's going to change because somebody's down there working on fabric right now. But anyway, um, it's the second one. But then if you go down to the middle, there's another one. There's three colors up there. They're all beautiful. You can't go wrong with any of them. It just 
depends on whether you you know you're a black and gray person versus a brown and whatever Italian reversible they're cotton they're beautiful I mean I think y'all know I burn every fabric I get just because I want to make sure that it's what the vendor told me it is and this cotton burns beautifully I mean there's nothing in there but cotton it has a beautiful white smoke it, it still has a real afterglow after you blow it out and it just gently goes out it's very pretty it's just, I mean I know it sounds crazy it's a really pretty burn but it's a really pretty burn <laughs> okay all right so that one's that one's that one that'll keep you in style four pieces out of the trench coat you're in good shape all right then I did something that has six pieces out of the trench coat. So we're going to kind of, once you made the four pieces, and the four pieces are only going to take you an hour, or maybe an hour and a half, whatever. It's not going to take long. I did six pieces. And so what I did this time is I did a little puffer coat. Okay, now I just love this thing, <laughs> man. I have been dancing around in this coat. Even at 97 degrees, I've had this coat on, and I've had more fun with this coat. So this is a fabric that we put online also, and it's um, quilted cotton nylon. It has a really, it's nylon on the outside. So, and you could, a lot of the puffer coats are horizontal, the quilts themselves are horizontal. I obviously wanted to be vertical. It doesn't make sense to me they're all horizontal. Everybody looks big enough in a puffer coat. And I did also a vest with this French dart in here. It's so flattering on. I just, I've never had a coat like this. You guys know I'm, I live in Dallas, Texas. I don't have a, you know, closet full of coats like you guys do, but you're going to want this in your closet. I love this. So I found this online actually is what I did is I saw this and I thought that is simply the trench coat. That is just way too cute. So I'm going to show you that what I did and, and both of these, you'll need to see this. And let me answer this question. And then I'll go back to this is you're going to take the trench coat pattern and this is what it looks like. You're going to fold it right on the center front line. The center front line's marked. That's the only difference you're doing. When you take away all the way to the center front, the collar will come right to the center front. So don't change the collar. All you have to do is change the pattern, fold it back at center front all the way down. Then on the back, the back has a pleat because the trench coat has a pleat. So instead of having that pleat, you're just going to fold it over. And I put the center back on a fold. All right, you, it's a straight center back, but because of the pleat, you can't put on a fold. But in this case, you're going to put it on the fold. So those are the only pattern changes you're going to do for both the the vest, this one, and the puffer vest. Both of these two. Those are the only pattern changes you're going to do. Now, the only reason this has six pieces is because I put pockets in this. I love these pockets, and so. You know, I don't think it's appropriate to really make a coat or a vest without these pockets. But we did online. We showed you how to do these welts. They're really great. They're quick and simple. And so you guys can handle these. This is not hard. Burberry trench coats is showing belt on the outside of these puffer coats. So that's why I put a belt on here because it is the hottest little style right now is to actually put a belt on the outside. They're somewhat fitted. The French dart is in there so that it'll fit really nicely. But then a little belt on the outside works great. If you don't like a belt, don't do a belt. But it's good to have some kind of elastic somewhere in it just to cinch them in a little bit or to give them a little bit of shaping. The, the trench coat with the French dart and the cr sides are shaped has some really nice shaping all by itself. But just once you put the body on, if you want a little more shaping, then you can curve the sides in or you can put a little bit of elastic in the back. All right, so the only change to the pattern was cut it at center front, okay, and took away the pleat on the back. That's all I did. Then I took eight inches off the bottom because I wanted it shorter. I wanted it to come down below my crotch because I want to wear it with leggings and I'm going to wear it closed and zipped up just like this. I'll put a long sleeve something on it. I put white underneath so you could see the contrast of the difference. Um, so there's just the front, the back. I did the two welts. I did the both welt pockets first. Um, like I said, love this. You want to pay attention to where the quilting is on this puffer coat so that you get it placed the same on both sides when you're doing your welts. Just be careful of that. 
I just surged all the way around here. The, 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 when you surge this fabric, it almost looks like it's a fancy kind of stitched. It's really nice. So I just surged it. I left it. I put the zipper underneath and just top stitched it all the way down. Notice it doesn't go all the way to the top. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And that's OK. It looks great just the way it is. So then the picture that I had seen online had a little fur collar to it. And I just absolutely love that. So I decided that my collar was going to be fur. What's underneath it is not. This coat on this fabric on the inside is a really nice soft cotton. It's really nice. So I don't need anything to line it or fuse it. Nothing. On this armholes again, I left them just like they are. You see you don't need to turn it and stitch it or anything. But let me go back to this collar for just a minute. Once I cut my collar, I put the right side of the collar against the wrong side of the coat and that's where I surge together so that as it flips out you can see that all these look finished even though underneath they're not but nobody looks underneath to see that they're not they all look nice and finished so I went did the front did the pockets side seams um, did the collar put it on surge the front just top stitch the zipper in place and did the hem and, and it really, honestly, a couple hours in and out, I was done. And I absolutely love this coat. I think it's so cute. I've never had a little puffer coat like this, a little vest. I love it. Absolutely love it. You can bet that I have to go to California this week, and I'm not going to wear it to California because I've seen the temperatures. But boy, I'm going to Portland soon after that. And it's definitely going to be on my body when I'm in Portland. I think it's just too cute. Okay, so... Um, the fur, the fur that I used was the real fur. We have those fur pieces, and I opted for real, but we have some beautiful faux fur online already, and we have more going up. So as we're speaking, there's some really beautiful furs going up. So you can decide what you want to do. I don't think there's, you know, the, the faux furs look so good today. You know, I don't think there's any advantage or disadvantage. I think it's just whatever you prefer. All right. So... I, I want to go back now to the trench. So we had four pieces, then we had six pieces. Now we're going to ramp up to 26 pieces. <laughs> okay. No, we're really not because what, what we're going to do is I've got some fabrics that are, I've had lots of emails. What are your trench coat fabrics? What are your trench coat fabrics? Will you show your trench coat fabrics? So I decided to show some trench coat fabrics. These are some fabrics that are two sided. And any time you make a trench coat out of a fabric that's two-sided, I can eliminate all of my lining pieces and all of my facing pieces. And that's almost 50% of the pieces. So if you're nervous about making the trench coat or using all the pieces, you can, this is a beautiful um, reversible border print plaid. Absolutely stunning. That's on there. I'm gonna show you this one also. This is a little heavier weight. And again, reversible plaid. So solid on one side, you could, I would do the brown on the outside and then have the lapels fold back to do this beautiful plaid. Burberry is doing some wild trench coats for fall. They've got floral, they've got all kinds of different trench coats. Google trench coats, it's, it's amazing. So try not to, or try to break out of what you think of that traditional trench coat to be. Um, I also wanted to show you this fabric because Oh my gosh, this fabric, and you guys I know can't see all of these fabrics. This is a border print. It's like a panel that's reversible. So this with black at the bottom or black at the top, either one would be absolutely stunning in a trench coat for fall. And then the last one I wanted to show you. So, I mean, we have lots more. Trust me, there's so many that would be great trench coats. This is a, a wool, and it has a faux fur that's a border. So this fabric's even hard to show online because the fur is about a 12 inch border out of the 60 inches. So easily you could do the trench coat, put the fur at the top, cut the fur off, maybe put the fur someplace else, put it at the bottom of sleeves. It's We're not allowed to say these designers. In some of these cases, this is a case. Can't say who the designer is, but you know who they are. And it's a beautiful piece of fabric. We'll have all of them linked on the replay tonight. Once we get it up, we'll have all those links up and all the fabric will be up and we'll get caught up. Okay, now we're going to jump into using more pieces. And what I did is I went through and made the pieces for you. 
So, and, I mean, you can't get these by mail. You're going to make your own pieces. But I did want to show you that when you make this collar, this is the only piece that's curved. Everything else on the trench coat is straight sewing. Next week, we did a PBS show on the trench coat. It was all straight stitching. And next week on YouTube, on Monday, we're going to put up that PBS. It's the th If you have the series of the 300 series, it's the 13th show. So PBS series 13, 300, sorry, episode 13 is what we're going to put up. But in the meantime, um, like this right here, this is four pieces. This is the upper collar, the under collar, the collar stand, and in a traditional trench coat, this is the belt loop. There's a belt loop that goes right on the collar because that's how you can hang your trench coat. When I did this trench coat, it's called Barbara's Trench because I duplicated a Burberry trench. I went to Saks Fifth Avenue. The lady was really nice. And I said, I have a pattern company and I want to buy a trench coat so I can duplicate it and make a pattern. She said, oh, here, let me help you. <laughs> she was really nice. Um, I was worried that she thought she'd be getting this big commission. You guys, trench coats are like $800. They're, they're not inexpensive. And I said, I'm going to bring this coat back tomorrow when I'm done with it. She goes, that's just fine. Keep your receipt and just, you know, let them know I helped you. She was just too nice. I'm not sure she understood what I was saying, but I said it like three or four times. <laughs> and probably when I walked out, she said, she probably thought, gosh, what a dumb lady. I heard her. I could hear what she said. I was just trying to be nice. Anyway, once you've sewn the collar, right sides together, you turn it to the inside and you put on the collar stand. And all you do is just straight stitches, go off, you fold, and this comes down. And you can see that's what makes the stand of the trench coat. There's some stitching on there. There's a hook and eye. It's really fun to do that. All right, so then I'm going to show you the little belt loops. The little belt loops are very easy to do. We could suggest you do them on the selvage of the fabric so that you don't even have to finish that edge. And you only need three belt loops. One goes on the collar itself and then two go on the coat. Actually there's four. One is a, a movable one. So one you actually form a circle and it moves along to hold the belt in place. The reason I told you I copied a Burberry is I did all the details of Burberry. Every detail of a Burberry is on this trench coat. The only thing I changed, and you guys probably can guess that at this point, is I changed the French dart. The Burberry, there's no trench coat out there that I've ever seen that has any kind of darting. And because it's a coat, it doesn't make sense to me that it wouldn't have darting because it's bulky and it's big and it's thick. And it would make sense to me that Thicker fabrics need more fit, not less. You know, that whole pillowcase effect. So this French dart is a really good friend of yours, and it's really going to make you look slimmer. And you don't see it. And what I did is when I put the pocket in, the pocket mirrors the angle of the French dart. So it's a beautiful line together when you go to put your hand in your pocket and where the French dart is. All right, so a lot of your pieces are actually these shields. Like there's a shield here in the front, and this shield obviously was, you know, the history of the trench coat. This can be closed up, and this actually can button underneath here. So all the little things that a trench coat is supposed to do, this trench coat does. Actually, this goes, buttons up there, and this buttons up there. And so it has all your button placements for everything to button and align exactly how they're supposed to. You can see the epi epi epitats. I think they're called. Anyway, there's two on each side. See, there's two pieces. Um, there's the sleeves, and there's belt loops on the sleeves. The belt loops on the sleeve are smaller than the other belt loops. So see, the, all those pieces, there's really not 26 pieces. There really is, but you know, I don't want you to think it's as complex it is, as it is, and there's not any reason you can't do it. I mean, I'm looking at this thinking, what can you not do? Probably the hardest part to me is there's tie interfacing in the top of the sleeve cap. And we did a YouTube on tie interfacing. You all who have used it know that tie interfacing is not difficult to put in. There's a beautiful shield on the back. Again, not difficult to do. You can do right sides together. So it's just a lot of fun. And again, if you use a fabric that's two-sided, that would be your next step because you don't have to worry about any of your linings. And this particular one, this is just a cotton poplin that I used. and I don't think it's necessarily trench coat fabric. I think we should try to get away from what we define as trench coat fabric because it's a zillion 
ideas of what trench coat fabric is. This one in particular, I had a Burberry lining, so I went ahead and lined this one with the Burberry. Here, you can see it here. So that when I put my collar up, everybody would think I spent a thousand dollars because I bought this for ten dollars a yard and I bought four yards. I didn't need four yards, but I bought plenty. So my trench coat cost me forty dollars. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that it cost me eight hundred dollars <laughs> with my little Burberry up there. All right. The trench coat should be knee length, just really a little bit below your knee is the right length for a trench coat. Typical for a trench coat. The puffer jacket, I took eight inches off the trench coat, so I wanted it to be just below my rear end in the back. That's because, again, this look is really stylish right now. I mean, I'm sure you can see this. It's all over the place right now, and it's with leggings. So I have a new textured fabric that's also going up tonight that's a beautiful texture that would be wonderful with leggings. It'd be wonderful with a lot of things, but really pretty with leggings. The back shield is... I didn't interface anything, but it has two layers. I'm not sure if, if you're asking that. It's two layers, and then it's just placed and sewn into, you know, around here. So you do all of that first. And when we have you do it, we go through and make all the parts and pieces, which is what I was saying to you. Make your shields. Make all your little parts and pieces. You know, that could just, like, be one whole time. You can see that here's my tabs for the shoulders. I think it's not hard. I think it's fun. <laughs> Put on a good movie and just go for it. it. It really is a lot of fun. Wax linen would be great. Absolutely. Wax linen. It'd be a lighter feel to it and you'd probably want to line it just to give it a little bit of weight but wax linen would be wonderful. Wax linen though keep in mind that that's really more of a summer look than it is a winter look. Of course it depends. I mean if you're in Florida yeah you're good. But if you're in Minnesota, wax linen isn't going to cut it for wintertime. Just, I hope I'm stating the obvious, but just so that you know. Rounded end, a keyhole buttonhole is what you want. You have shearling fabric? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that, that is just overlapped and stitched so that the shearling shows through to the leather. And those jackets are about $5,000, so you just upped your price a lot by the materials you're using. So I think that's what's fun about a trench coat, because if we recognize and start at a level like this, if we're a little nervous and we make four pieces and then we make pockets and then we move up, the trench coats I was looking at, depending on the fabric used and whether it's leather or shearling or whatever, go to five, eight thousand dollars. And they're the same pattern. It's the same thing. It's just how they're put together. And if you go online and look at what you like and start with this 1925 is the pattern of the month, you can leave off the parts. Like notice that there's a lot of jackets on there that they don't have the buckle. They don't have the belt loops. They don't have the shield. You can make it you know, whatever levels you want, but they're still all the trench coats. Some are double-breasted, some are single-breasted. Pay attention to that. I put all the hard stuff in there so that you could take it away and then add it back in as you were ready for it. So I made it double-breasted, you can make it single-breasted. I made a pleat, you can take the pleat away. But it's better to have it there than not have it there and you have to add it. But don't let it intimidate you. Yeah. Uh, the long coat is a, is a vest. There's no sleeve on this. It's the t-shirt underneath that you're seeing. And then I just hemmed the bottom. And I thought about actually turning the gray out, but I wouldn't do that at the bottom. It, it, you really don't want the eye going to the bottom there. I did at the neckline, but at the bottom I went ahead and hemmed it like a normal t-shirt. Burberry lining, I found it all just you kind of luck upon it. I don't know if anybody advertises it, but I will give you a heads up that I was in Minneapolis a few weeks ago and I was at SR Harris and SR Harris has Burberry. So they have a couple different weights um, and they had, they had a good amount. I thought about buying the whole, <laughs> buying the whole lot, but they had a good amount. So I don't know if they'd have it on their website, but it was at their, they have two stores. It was at their warehouse store, not their newest store that's in the, um, it's at the warehouse store, the northern store. Okay? 
All right, now if you're making the trench coat, another really fun idea just to give it some texture is to come in and do this with furs, just to mix the textures together. Whenever you're going to do furs, don't do a lot. Like I wouldn't even do the pockets. It's too much. It's too spotty. The only thing I really did on this was I did the shield here and then I did the shield in the back. And you can see it's a really nice touch, but it's enough. Don't go nuts with it um, because it's just not necessary. It's just a little bit. I, I wouldn't do the collar if you're going to do the shield. If you're not going to do the shield, you could do the collar. You could trade that out and just decide what you want to. But again, there's so many trench coats online that you can get a really good feel for what you want to do by simply looking and getting some ideas from those different places. Okay? Single breasted, that's where you're going to take your pattern, fold it back at center front, that's single breasted, that's it. That's what I did to this. Fold it back to center front. On this I was going to put a zipper in, so I folded it back to center front. If you notice the zipper is giving it a little bit more than center front, so all I had to do was meet those two at center front. This I wasn't going to have a closure on, so all I have is those two coming together at center front because I was going to wear it open. I didn't need any kind of overlap or closure. So just fold it back at center front, you're good to go. Center front's marked on the pattern, just take away all that double breastedness. Okay? The armholes on the vest, I surged them, turned them under 3 eighths, top stitched. Just like all knits, everything else. Are we good? Okay, I have a surprise for you. Are we ready? Okay, so you guys, um, we have just, you know, styles right now have all the shears and the shears are below the bottoms and you don't need any certain pattern. You know, I kept thinking, okay, should I come out with a fall pattern that has a shear at the bottom? And you, we don't need that. I've thought and thought a lot about this. So what I did is I took the tank top and I cut the tank top long and then I took a coordinating piece of fabric and I cut the... I used the sweater set is what I did. And you guys are all going like, duh, again? <laughs> so here's the look. That's the look that I want. Let me kind of show you in pieces. So this is just a really easy, fun thing that you all can do. I'm going to just kind of take it apart. All right, so first off, you can see that this is just the sweater set. It's just great fabric. This is the, um, it's a knit. Knits are either knitted or they're cut and sewn, so this is a cut and sewn. What I did, you can see by top stitching around here, I just surged the edge, folded it under and top stitch. It looks like a binding. So it's really nice looking, the fact that it really looks like a, a knit binding across. I did the same thing at the hem. I know you may not be able to see that, but it looks really nice as well. Okay, so underneath what I did is it's the tank top. So I cut the tank top eight inches longer so that it was plenty long. Now here, let me pull this up a little bit. This is that gradiated silk that I have online. Oh my gosh, it is the most beautiful piece of fabric. And let me tell you what started this for me. There was a, it was Nordstrom's, and I don't remember the designer. I want to say Philip Lim, but I, I don't remember. Vince Camuto, I, I can't remember who it was. But they had a, a, a sweater and a shirt just like this, coordinated to match. And then of course they had it with black leggings, and you guys know I have the black leggings all ready to go don't have to make a new pair. But the sweater was $400, the shirt was $400, and I thought, okay, $800, that's just crazy money. So I looked and looked when I was in New York for these great fabrics, and this is it. This, this fabric is so beautiful. Like I said, I think you can see where it's gradiated. Up at the top, it's white and gradiates down to this gray. And so when the sweater comes off it, on top of it, you just see that beautiful combination. It's really lovely. All right, then this is the same fabric that I made the scarf from last week. So when you put that scarf on and it matches the sweater, this is just awesome. I mean, it's just an, a great look. And again, not something I can wear to California this week, but you can see the snaps show, the open snaps if you decide to open it a little bit. This could be worn if I, the, what I like about them being separate, I thought about this obviously for a while, is that I can wear the sweater and the scarf completely separately. I can wear the tank top with something else. I could even wear this next spring if I wanted to just put a little wrap lightweight cotton sweater over it 
with leg guns. So it allows my parts to be so much more useful than just one outfit sewn together because that's how they are. When you look at the store, they're all sewn together. So I love this look. I left mine open at the side, so it had a little slit at both sides when I made that tank top longer. So combination of 500 tank top with 195, great look. We have, I think we have some of the most beautiful fabrics we've ever had. And I know I say that all the time, but I honestly think they're the most beautiful fabrics we've ever had. They're just stunning. One of the guys I buy from in New York has really started importing a lot of Italian goods. And you know, some of these prices, they're going up a little tiny bit, but they're amazing fabrics for the prices that they're at. So hopefully you can delve in and, and sample some and really get them made up. Don't, don't store these, you know, don't stash them. If you're, gonna, if you're not going to make them, don't get them because they're just too pretty and they're really trendy in the current. We're seeing a lot of these um, gradiated colors just a lot. It's very popular for fall and so when I saw these fabrics it was really exciting to kind of get a hold of them. Okay so that's your little surprise. It's just a little fall trend. Next time we're going to talk about fall and um, fall pattern fabric combinations. Simple ideas that you can really kind of get a good nice wardrobe together but I kind of wanted to show you that because I was just really excited that it works so well. The colors are so beautiful together. This the one that we made the scarf out of, what's the name of this fabric? It's blue, black. No, this was the, this, yes, it was the Lululemon scarf. Whoops, the Lulu Sprite scarf. They, um, but I think it's on the second page and it's black, brown. No, it's, it's blue, black, blue, black, charcoal. It's got a, yes, that's it. What is that? dark charcoal black blue wool knit. It's just so pretty and I know y'all can't see it as pretty as it is but it's really beautiful. Okay. This scarf wasn't a pattern. Last webcast we showed you how to make that and gave you all the dimensions and gave you all of that information to make it and why it's those dimensions and then you can go in and Google that scarf and find all these different ways to wear it. It's very creative. Okay. not that fur. We have this fur. We've got some different furs, but we don't have that one. Okay. All right. Any other questions we can wrap up with? It's amazing how fast the hour goes. We are there. We are excited. I hope you've had fun. I hope you can say I can make that trench coat. I'm going to start out with four pieces. I'm going to go to six pieces. I'm going to go up to 10 pieces, no lining. And then I am going to make that 26 piece trench coat. All right not a big deal. You said that with jeans, right? So we're thinking maybe in December we'll have a fundraiser and we'll make a trench coat. Maybe not, but maybe. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. All right, ladies, what can we help you with? See you in two weeks. Get your email tomorrow. Help us with um, our public television, our PBS fund drives. We really need your support. We have no money from anywhere. It all comes from you guys. So we really appreciate your support. We really appreciate you being here. And we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.